Today, we'll be learning how to use tokens within Cloud Radial, with an emphasis on their use in question templates. Tokens are one of the most advanced features that we offer. While they are more complex than our other features, they offer a greater reward overall. Let's start by taking a look at the tokens already loaded into the system. Let's navigate over to Partner and Settings on the left-hand side of the feature set, and click on Tokens on the right-hand side under Configuration, with the little at sign. Looking at these tokens, you can see that they start with the at symbol and have both a name and number attached to them. We can use these names and numbers, called values, to call these through to various areas in the system, which is the key to faster management. In other words, they let you use shorthand codes to stand for other things that the system will fill in whenever it's time to execute the actions. It's pretty much the same as an algebra equation that uses x to stand for a number. In math, whenever you're ready to run the formula, you can plug in a number for x and get on your way. It's the same idea with tokens. Let's look at how they can work in the context of a question template. And by the way, if you haven't seen our video on question templates, you should stop and watch it now. It'll help you understand this lesson a lot better. Now, let's head to Partner and Settings on the left-hand side and click on Question Templates, still under Configuration. In fact, it's just right above Tokens. We can see that the question templates have their own name, but they also have their own associated token name and their own associated value, just like the tokens we saw before. Let's add a new one so we can use it in our token-specific example. I'll make this one super simple. I'll pretend I'm creating an onboarding form for multiple clients, and I'd like to ask a set of three questions that I know I'll always be asking. Now we can see that my new question template has its own token name and ID. This is also automatically updated in the token area we just went to as well. Note that the question templates already have a QT appended to them in front of the token name. That way, you'll know without a doubt that the token we're dealing with is calling back to a question template. So now what? Now, we'll head to Partner Content on the left-hand side of the Feature Sets, and we'll pick one of the two categories that can use question templates. In my case, since the example we're using is an onboarding form, I'll use the Service Catalog down here but know that the process for problem reports would be exactly the same. Now let's create a new item to test the token. When it comes time to choose the question type, I'll go ahead and select the option for template. Then we're going to choose the sub option specified by token. You can see that the option changes to start with an at sign. We're going to plug in the token that we created earlier, at QT token test. Then we'll go ahead and hit submit. And now that we created a new ticket, we'll go ahead and publish it. Let's go check it out and make sure it's working live. We'll head over to support on the left hand side of the feature sets and click on request service. Here's our new test service request item. And we can see that our template is firing off exactly the way we want using the token. Now, all of this was a lot more complex than just creating a series of questions within the content package and publishing it out. So why is it worth it? Because now you can update just that single question template from the back end with any new changes you need. In the example we just did, we're really asking only some basic questions you ask for in an onboarding all the time things like your name, your number, your email, etc. Instead of finding every individual problem ticket and service request in the partner content area and modifying the questions inside on a per client basis, we can just go to question templates and update the fields from there in one fell swoop. Arguably the biggest benefits to these tokens and question templates is that there's no need to publish changes. They're automatically appended for everyone. To prove that, let's add another question to the question template and come back and check. We'll do the same thing as before. Let's head down to Partner on the left-hand side, navigate down to Settings, find our question templates on the right-hand side under Configuration, pick our question template, Token Test, and add a new question. Then we can just hit Submit. 
Now without going back to the partner area, let's head immediately back to support and check on the service request item. We can see that the field is automatically applied at runtime. That means less lag and less confusion because it runs immediately coming from the question template area. The example we just did covers a partner level token. In other words, the token we just used has the ability to affect all of the loaded in clients within your Claude Radial tenant. Any client that subscribed to the content package with the service request that uses the question template token will ultimately see the same fields. In fact, I've got another tab at the top that proves this. Right now, if I close out of this window, we can see that we've been inside of Ricky's MSP. The other tab I have is for Safi's retail store in the same request service area. I'll go ahead and refresh it. The content package is published to the all group, which Safi is a part of. And if I click on the ticket, it's the exact same fields. Now that was the easy mode. To add some more flexibility and a bit of complexity, we can also have company level tokens. Remember how earlier I said that tokens had both a name and a number, also called a value, that you could use to call through whatever they stood for? You can actually mix and match these tokens to call through to different things within a single problem report or service request. Let's try not to get a headache, but let's also see how. In this example, let's pretend I have a set of clients that have very specific requirements that vary wildly between each other. As such, I can't get away with using a single token for everyone's onboarding form, so I need to build a custom one within each question template and mix it with my other tokens. Let's head over to Partner Settings on the left-hand side of the feature set and click on Question Templates under Configuration just like before. Now, I'll add a new custom onboarding form for my client, Ricky's MSP. I'll make some custom questions that are specific just to this client and just like last time, we'll see that it's going to add a custom token and value. Here it is, in all its glory. QT, Ricky's MSP, with an associated value of 608. Let's remember that, that number is going to be important in this example. Now, let's head over to Partner and Clients. We need to select a client that's getting their own company level token, in this case, Ricky's MSP. We'll go ahead and click on him. And once I do, there's going to be an option for tokens in the submenu. Let's add a new one with the button at the right. We can see that the system is prompting me to create a brand new token and give it a name. Again, this token is going to be specific just for this client. I'll go ahead and call it onboarding. For the value, I'm going to put 608, just like the question template token we just created. Now I'll go ahead and click Submit. So what did I just do and what just happened? By giving the newly created token a different name but associating it with an existing token's value, I've created a brand new token that's visible only for one company. No other company has the at onboarding token available to them, and the at onboarding token just redirects to the at Ricky's MSP token. So here's the important part. The redirect will only happen for my client, Ricky's MSP, because the token is local to them. That's company level tokens in a nutshell. So how can we use this new token? Well, I can go back to our generic onboarding ticket under partner content, specifically in the service request catalog at the bottom. Then I can modify the ticket by clicking on it, and I'll go ahead and add a new question in addition to the original token that we have. I'm going to make this question type a token as well. But in this case, I'm going to make a call to at onboarding. Watch what happens now. We'll hit submit and we'll publish just like usual. Now, as a member of Ricky's MSP, I can go to my service request area and see that the new question template appeared just fine. But if I swap over to my other tab with Safi's retail store, and we'll refresh her view just to make sure she has the latest view, and we'll click on her, we'll see that she doesn't have that token appended because it doesn't match any known tokens for this account. 
However, here's a neat trick for super cloud radial power users. We can make another question template for Safi's retail store as well, just like we did for Ricky. Let's run through the motions just like usual. Cancel out of Ricky's, head to partner, head to settings, and head over to question templates. Now let's add a custom form specifically for Safi. At QT Safi with an associated value of 609. Let's remember that number as well. We'll do the same exact thing we did for Ricky's. So we're going to head over to Partner Clients. We'll click on Safi's retail store this time. We'll go to her tokens area. And we're going to add a custom token for her using the same name at onboarding. However, unlike Ricky's MSP, her value is 609. Now we'll click Submit, close out, and go and check her service request area. Now remember, her local token is called at onboarding, just like Ricky's MSP, but this time we've got a different value plugged in that pulls Safi's custom token through just for Safi's retail store. By using the same name for the local token, in this example, at onboarding for both clients, we don't even have to change the ticket in the service catalog. Cloud Radio will automatically run the appropriate token for each client at runtime. Let's see if it worked. We'll swap over to the other tab, refresh the screen, and you'll see that her token pulls through and adds onto the custom tokens and templates we had before. We didn't ever need to touch the partner content area, and we can manage everything from one place. Cloud Radial always looks and reads local company level tokens first and executes those. If it can't find any, it'll look for partner level tokens and execute those. If it can't find any at all, it'll just leave it blank. That's what happened before when we saw that Safi didn't have my token, so the question template didn't show up as anything else in the field. Using this multi token mix, you're functionally switching your Cloud Radio problem report and service request management from the content area to the question templates area. If clients need to change their onboarding forms, you can modify the templates and tokens from one area in question templates rather than jumping from client to client and content package to content package. Tokens, particularly those in relation to question templates, are without a doubt far more complex than the usual route. However, they also make the system incredibly scalable and far faster because all of the processing is done through tokens at the exact moment of runtime, also known as when they click the button to request things. Be sure to experiment with tokens to build a masterpiece of automation.